Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All right. Good morning, everyone. We are waiting for the post notifications to go out. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, yeah. Today is Thursday, August 20th, 2020. And I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. My daughter, Ariel, is 21 months years of age. Wow. Where has the time officially gone? 21 months is amazing. Folks, a little programming note while we're waiting for everybody to join us this morning. We want to remind each and every one of you that we are live weekdays at 7.30 a.m. We do our very best to come on right at 7.30, but sometimes when I'm just trying to get Ariel uh, set up, it just doesn't work that way. As you know, if you're a parent, uh, it just gets a little bit backed up, a little crazy. But you know what? It happens. And we are going to be working on getting things a lot uh, you know, in, in better shape, in better order. Um, and, and of course, our structure is going to uh, be changing as September rolls around. We're going to be creating our new season, our fall season. So I just want to let each and every one of you know a couple things before we move on to the Crazy Date Story Part 15. Uh, I just want to remind each and every one of you that the Crazy Date Stories are coming to an end for this season. We're going to be doing crazy dates throughout the summer vacation. That's right. Summer vacation is when crazy date stories will actually take place. So this will be the final uh, first season of crazy dates. Remember, I've got tons of stories that I want to share with each and every one of you. But crazy date story is coming to an eight and to an end for this season. We will return with that in the summer. As we're getting close to the fall season, we're doing our part to make sure that each and every one of us are ready, willing, and able to be a part of what's coming up as the seasons change. Well, don't forget, we have the Gabby uh, Santana Rocks. I'm going to be uh, asking each and every one of you to email me, angel at halffaithletitbegin.com, if you would like a rock. So uh, just want to let you know one thing. She's selling the rocks uh, for $5. I have personally bought rocks to give away to each and every one of you. So there's a couple of viewers out there that are already going to be receiving those rocks because you've been with us since the very beginning. So if you have a chance, write to us. Let me know here. And it's going to be the email address of angel at halffaithletitbegin.com. Write to me and let me know how I can send you out the rock. I am not going to charge you for any shipping. Everything will be, uh, be paid for by us here at Half Faith Let It Begin. All right, I've spoken enough. It's two minutes and 43 seconds in, and we're at 7.37 a.m. Most of us have to get to work. Crazy Date Story, part 15, last part of the season, two-part series, starts right now. Broadcasting live worldwide. On June 16th, 2018, a show designed for you, The Daily Commuter, went live. A weekly show all about faith. A show with motivational topics, inspirational stories, and personal testimony set out to change the world. Don't you see that your faith is coming alive? Don't you see that it's tested every time? He's the one that makes your life Hi, I am Mia. You are listening to Have Faith, Let It Begin. Hello, my name is Amari, and today we are back on another episode of Have Faith and Let's Begin. Hi, my name is Isabella, and you're listening to Have Faith, Let It Begin. Hey, this is Freddie, and you're listening to Have Faith, Let It Begin. Hi, my name is Angela, and you're listening to Have Faith, Let It Begin. Welcome to Have Faith, Let It Begin. Here's your host, Angel Santana. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live edition of Half Faith Let It Begin Crazy Date Story Part 15. Reminder to each and every one of you. The Crazy Date Stories are only a summer series. So we are concluding our summer series as we get into the fall. We are concluding it today and next Thursday. So I saved a good cliffhanger for all of us to start right now. Part 1 of a Part 15 Crazy Date Story starts now. 
So after a lot of dates have gone by and everything has been going on, I decided to choose, do something a little different. I stopped taking referrals from friends. I stopped going out to clubs. I stopped looking for the girl of my dreams. I decided there's probably no better way to do it than the way I was looking at things on the commercials. I saw Match.com. I said, wow, this has got to be it. I mean, think about it. I just got to pay for the service. I'll make a profile. I'll put a picture up. And what better way? They can already see what I look like. They can hear about my story and all that I have to offer. And then next thing you know, they're going to ask me for a date. Yep, Match.com is where I went. So I went on there, created a a profile, a bio, got everything set up. And for those of you that don't know, again, I'm speaking just for the record of Match.com back in 2004 and 5 and 6. So this has probably changed since then. Uh, but back then, you would actually uh, make your bio. Then you could take a look at other pictures and people that are looking for uh, their next match. And if you're interested, you can send a wink. And if you've paid for the subscription, you can chat with them live. Well, there was a loophole back then. You can actually uh, send them a wink and uh, you can actually not pay for the full subscription. I'm sorry. I'm being honest. And uh, go to uh, the instant messenger on AOL and actually talk to them uh, that way so that you didn't have to pay extra. Yeah, the loophole did exist. So I put my name up there and every day I would come home and I'd get a couple winks and I'd, I'd of course, send thousands of winks to everybody. Um, but one particular day I got home and there was an individual that was interested, young lady, uh, was interested in getting to know me. Um, I saw her picture. I thought she was a very pretty young lady. We started to chat on AIM, otherwise known as AOL Instant Messenger. When we had a good conversation, there was no phone numbers ex- uh, exchanged. We spoke for a little while on the um, on the Instant Messenger. We did it uh, nightly when I got home from work. Uh, and then we would eventually work our way up to an actual phone call. Um, I gave her my number. I told her that if she felt comfortable, she can block her number and just call me. So she did, and we spoke. Uh, The conversation went very well. Everything was going really well. And then about a month after the constant talking, uh, we decided to meet up for the first time. And uh, she wanted to meet in a public place, so we met at a mall. So as I went to the mall, I uh, purposely got there a little early. And I figured maybe I can get a chance to, uh, you know, get there early, make sure that I everything's all set up. When I'm sitting there, all of a sudden I see a girl uh, approaching, but she did not look like the picture that was presented on the match. Now, when I say that, it wasn't that I was dis- uh, disappointed. I just knew that it wasn't the same girl. When she came up to me and said hello, the voice was also different. So I knew that I wasn't speaking directly with the young lady that I was speaking to on the phone, but she clearly knew who I was. So when we started to talk, I said, hi, my name is Angel. And her name was Natalie. Natalie said, listen, I wanted to let you know that uh, I am not the person that you've been speaking with. I said, I kind of figured you don't sound the same and you surely don't look like the picture on the match. She goes, yes. She goes, I want you to know that the girl is not coming. And I said, okay. Um, all right. Why? She goes, well, she just decided that she wasn't interested. Um, but I want you to know that the whole time you guys were talking, I was always around. And I got to liking you. And I thought there was no need for her to stand you up. She says, so I came in her place. I says, oh, okay, Uh, this is kind of awkward. I don't know really much about you. She goes, well, that's what's going to be fun about today. She goes, now you can learn about me because I know everything about you. Said, awkward again. So we officially went and walked the mall, had a great time. Everything was really, really cool. Uh, We started to talk and we went uh, into a cafe, had coffee, uh, had some dessert and decided to plan an official first date. We exchanged phone numbers. And uh, at the end of the night, she gave me a kiss on the cheek. It was awesome. I felt like Match.com did me well. So I got in the car, I drove home, I was excited. And when I got home, I noticed that I had two messages on my answer machine. 
my home answer machine. So I'm thinking, oh, cool. You know, like, what a way to end the night. I got two messages on the machine. Everything is great. So I play the message, and the first message is from a girl named Stephanie. And Stephanie says, I don't understand what happened. I thought we were going to meet at the mall. Why didn't you meet me? Why did you stand me up? Stephanie was the girl that I had been talking to over the phone for the last month. Stephanie went to the mall. Stephanie was told by her friend, Natalie, that I was not interested. Natalie (laughs) interrupted and basically cut corners... (laughs) And shortcut it or cut the line, so to speak. That's right. Natalie is her college roommate. Natalie, who had difficulty dating, fell for my voice, fell for the conversations and undercut her and basically took over the date. I was so surprised. And what happened was this. I I called up... uh, Stephanie back and I apologize for not meeting with her. She did not know that Natalie had showed up for the date. Stephanie actually believed that I stood her up. So I wanted to know if this was a complete gag on me. Because honestly, I wasn't sure what was happening. I wasn't sure if Natalie and Stephanie were in cahoots and they were maybe pulling a fast one on me from my friends who had all been, you know, uh, pretty much happy and funny. They thought everything was hysterical about all my crazy date sagas. So I decided to do something a little different. I decided not to tell anyone what had happened. And I started to talk to both girls at the same time. Because I knew in the back of my mind, somebody was going to pull the plug and say, hey, this is all a joke. This is all a hoax. We were in this together. When I met up with Stephanie for our very first date, we had the greatest time. It was as if we never missed a beat. Our conversations picked up from the conversations we had done for a month over the phone. At the end of our date, she leaned in and gave me a kiss goodnight. And that got me thinking. Why would two people be in cahoots, go through all this, have a great date and still give me a good night kiss I said to myself uh oh they both don't know that they're doing this to each other I also then said uh oh what do I do now how do I let each one of them know that technically I am talking to both at the same time and that is where we conclude today's episode for a cliffhanger as we have our season finale next Thursday and guess what you're not going to want to miss this because I will tell you now the ending of this story surpasses them all cliffhanger for all of you have faith let it begin